Hey, I'm Wesley Aaron Roth, and welcome to the first Spark of Madness Flash Take. Overlord was directed by Julius Avery and written by Mark L. Smith and Billy Ray. I'm really not that familiar with Mark L. Smith, but Billy Ray did write Shattered Glass and Breach, which were two movies that I really like. And Julius Avery directed Son of a Gun, which is a movie that I absolutely adored. As for Overlord, I first heard about this movie about a year ago. I read that it was going to be the next chapter in the Cloverfield universe. Now, somebody who loved the original and absolutely adored 10 Cloverfield Lane, uh, I was really let down by the Cloverfield paradox. You can check our video in the channel to see. So I hope that this would be a writing of the ship, kind of a return to form, and with talent like this that they had on board, I had a lot of confidence in the project. Now fast forward to March at CinemaCon, J.J. Abrams, who did produce this movie, uh, made it clear that this was not going to be a part of the Cloverfield franchise, that this was an entirely standalone film. The story follows a unit of American paratroopers on the eve of D-Day. They're tasked with bringing down a radio control tower that's located inside of a church in a small village outside of Normandy. Their transport is shot down and they regroup. They encounter a woman, her younger brother, and their ailing aunt. After a confrontation with a Nazi officer, they learn that something frightening is going on inside of the church. Now, the very first thing that I want to highlight in this movie are the performances. Well, this is a B-movie, it's definitely an elevated one, and it is the performances that bring it up to that next level. Giovanna Depo plays Boyce, our main character. He's a reluctant soldier who was just drafted about three months ago. I immediately empathized with that. Uh, he was scared, he was nervous, he didn't know what exactly he was doing there, but he knew that he wanted to do the right thing. I think that's what really connected me to his character more than anything, was that he didn't necessarily always want to follow orders, he wanted to do what was right. Wyatt Russell, son of Kurt Russell, plays an explosives expert that is heading up the operation. Now, much like I said with John David Washington for Black Klansman, Wyatt Russell absolutely has the X Factor that made his father famous. There are moments in this movie where you're not entirely sure that you are not watching a young Kurt Russell. Pilo Asbeck from Game of Thrones uh, sort of plays your typical Nazi villain role here, uh, save for some very impressive practical effects. Uh, it's somewhat forgettable. I mean, it's a decent performance, but it's not reinventing the wheel at all. Now, the direction of the movie walks the line between war movie and horror movie quite well, actually. It never gets too over the top horror, but for me, it didn't go far enough into the kind of Saving Private Ryan war film that I would have hoped that it would to kind of enhance the realism of the more horrific elements. What I will say is the movie opens with a bang, quite literally. The opening sequence is phenomenal. I don't really want to ruin it, I just want you to see it for yourself, but it's something that from the outside looking in seemed like a cliche, something we've seen before, but it was executed in a way that, was, that turned out to be really enjoyable. So in the end, guys, I'm going to give this movie a 7 out of 10. I liked it a lot, but I did not love it. While I could see myself buying it on Blu-ray to show it to friends, I don't really think that I could ever see myself just sitting down to watch it by myself again, at least quite rarely. Anyway, thank you guys for checking out the very first Spark of Madness flash take. This is something we're doing for movies that we don't necessarily want to do an entire podcast on. Now, you're not always going to be seeing me here, and we're going to be changing up the format a little bit, seeing what works and seeing what doesn't. Also, this Wednesday, November 14th, the guys are back, and they're talking about a John Hughes classic, Planes, Trains, and automobiles. We hope you join us. And once again, thank you. We'll see you next time.